Hey folks, uh, it's been a little while since I've posted and I wanted to take a look at one of the new features in Houdini 20. So we're going to be taking a look at the texture mask paint. Uh, one of the things I love most about Houdini is how hackable everything is. So this is really designed, uh, well at least initially, for the feather workflow. But I've managed to hook it up so that I can do some normal map painting. And... This is quite fun to do. So we can kind of paint a normal map onto this shiny sphere. It comes with a few caveats as always, but let's dive in and we can take a look at how it was done. Uh, so I'm just inside in SOPS and I'm going to throw down a sphere. Now we'll need UVs because we're doing some texture painting, so I'm just going to use a UV project. And I'm going to keep the actual geometry quite simple and the setup overall quite simple. Uh, so it is a sphere, so I'll just use polar and I'll initialize those. I'm just gonna put down a null or geo out. And let's put down a texture mask paint node. So by default, uh, when I hit enter here, I should be able to paint something. There we go, happy days. We have two options coming out of the texture mask paint. We can go back out to geometry here. The other option here lets us go back out to a mask. So, so I'll just put down another null here, just to be sure that that's what I'm getting. And if I middle mouse here, you can see I have created a volume called mask, uh, and a mask has been created over here. So we could, in theory, do all of our height field stuff, including uh, going out to cops. So let's put down a cop network, and let's put down a sop import here. Now, I'm going to go over to the build I had before, which is the substance one. I'm going to allow me to just split this view, and I've got this view split as well. I have a video on how I did that, but you can uh, set up your workspace, of course, as you please. Now, I want to uh, ensure that my mask, which I'm creating, is going to be, by default, it's going to be a resolution of 1K. So I want to set up my comp over here to be the same. So that will be edit. And we go comp settings and we'll just do 1024 by 1024. Close that. And let's go and grab our out to cops now. So you can see we've pulled in our uh, little bit of paint here. Just over here then, I could put down a labs quick material. We can test this. I can just, uh, let's put down a note over here. And we'll just say to sops. And let's just drag and drop this guy in. We just need to put OP in front of it. OP colon in front. And now we get our mask put back out onto our sphere. Now the issue is that there is an alpha uh, being generated. So we just need to delete that. So put down the delete node over here. And we'll say what we want to delete is the alpha. So if I come over to the viewport now to get it to update and I give it a, a bit of a wiggle, you can see that, yeah, we have gotten rid of our transparency problem. Now that updating thing is a little bit annoying where you've got to move the viewport. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, maybe fix that a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, this is basically working. So I can come back in here and I can paint away. It goes through cups and it comes back out here. Now while that seems like an extra step, it means that we can uh, manipulate the data over in cups. For example, we can put down a labs grayscale from normal node and Let's put that into our normals channel here. And we can get rid of it in the base color. Maybe if we uh, go up a level here and I will just add some lights to the scene just to make it a little easier to see. So we'll add a skylight and let's go and add a, an environment light. I think this is a bug on side effects part. Uh, really, when I put an environment light in here, I'd still like to be able to move the actual light around. So in this case, if I wanted to move it, I'd need to turn back on the uh, the sky environments, the, the gradient, and move it around, then turn that back off again. Besides that, we've got a little bit nicer lighting in here, and that should mean that we can come back to our quick material. And uh, let's just drive up the metalness a little bit. We're getting a little bit of a render error here at the edge. Uh, I found that if I take my tint for my light here and I just pull it down a little bit uh, that seems to get rid of that if I lower the roughness value here we should get a little bit more reflection now I'm getting quite a lot of noise in the image if I hit D over the viewport here I can go to lights and I can increase the uh, the light samples maybe up to 128 and that will soften that off a little bit 
And in fact, I might just choose the other sky dome. Yeah, there we go. So now I've got my uh, sphere here. I can come back in and I can start painting my normal map. One of the problems, unfortunately, that we're going to run into is that it's a little bit slower than I want it to be. I did find a few ways to speed it up. So if I hide away the cop setup, which I don't really need to see anymore, that gives me back a little bit of interactivity. Activity is I can lower the overall resolution. Now that's not an ideal solution uh, because I'm going to get a softer normal map overall. Uh, so this works and I'm getting a little bit more interactivity. It's still a little bit on the slower side. Uh, we can try lowering the lighting down and now it's starting to feel a little bit snappier. But overall, I was struggling a little bit to get it to go as fast as I would like. But in this particular case, what's actually slowing everything down is the lab's normals node here. So this seems to be the thing that's slowing us down. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to confirm that because again, another one of those uh, joyful little COPS things is that the performance monitor does not work within the COPS context. So I can measure the overall speed of my graph uh, using the performance monitor over here, but it will not list any of the COPS nodes. But I know through trial and error from turning it on and off that this is just taking a little bit too long to cook. You know, it's not that it takes ages to cook this node, it's just when we're, when we're painting we want immediate feedback uh, and it's slowing things down a little bit. So I found another way around this uh, using a HDA that someone else built. What we're pulling out of this is a, well, we think of it as a picture, but really what's being pulled out is a 2D volume, right? Uh, and so what we need to do to make this a bit more interactive then is to avoid using this node here. So we've got to come up with some other way to try and generate a normal map uh, based on the height field mask that we have just here. Um, so we do have a node that will do that for us. It's called a volume analysis node, and this will measure the gradient of volumes. Uh, there's an option here called gradient. If I was just to plug this guy in, you'll see it's doing something, but it's not doing exactly what I expect. It doesn't look like a normal map. So we would need to figure out a way to use this node to generate some normals information that we can then carry through cops and pull back out here to shade our sphere. So while researching how I would go about uh, generating my own normal map from a volume, I happily come across uh, this stuff here, which is generated by Christian Ackeson. Hope I'm pronouncing your name okay. And he has done uh, an excellent uh, little tool just here. I will link to his video over on YouTube uh, just shortly, but he's also done a very nice written tutorial as well which is just over here on learncreategames.com uh, where he goes down through it in detail. He also created a HDA out of the whole thing. So we can come over here and we can download and use the HDA, which I've already done. So let's go and install that HDA. My hips inside the HDA here. Uh, so if we allow editing of contents here, we can dive in and take a look. Now, uh, Christian is going to explain uh, the setup in uh, his video and his blog post much, much better than I will. But he is basically creating some volumes here for color. Uh, and then down here, he is working out some math to take the gradient information and move it into a color space that we can use for doing normal mapping. So it's brought from here into this cop. And you can see all he's doing here really is he is importing the information that he's finding and he is renaming it and then he well in his case he's writing it out onto disk okay so i want to be able to access this information here because this is going to be faster than using the labs normal node set this up over here uh in my second view now this one here this uh composite one is locked so number two is set to number two over here uh, so you can see there's a little bit of an issue at the moment in that we're not reading in any useful information. So let's go back up here. So we have a mask just here. And one of the things I found that I had to do was put down a height field copy layer. And I'm just going to change it to take the mask and put it into a, a height uh, volume. So uh, the tool here expects both height and a mask and it fails out otherwise. So 
So I'm just taking the mask and putting it out towards height, uh, and that seems to satisfy the tool's needs. And it goes all the way down through the volume gradient and then into cops. So over in cops, we can see that the it's bringing in this height value that I've created and CD. So it's set to height by default. You can change it over to CD here, and you can see that yes, that looks more like what we'd expect on the normal uh, on the HDA itself then we can decide whether we're going to try and make a normal map from a low res to a high res version or you can say uh, from a flat height field uh, depending on the look that you're going for and then we can take this guy and we can put this into our quick material so if I take my new normal map and I put it in here OP now when we come back and paint here Oh, I need to set my viewer over towards my quick material. Close up cups just to make the whole thing go a little bit faster. In fact, it wasn't really the viewer that was uh, slowing it down. It was more the, the thumbnails here. Now I can set my picker over to my texture map paint. And I can come in and I can start to paint. And that feels significantly more interactive so that's fairly snappy now keeping in mind obviously i uh, i'm still painting at a relatively low resolution so we can try and go back to our texture map paint here and let's clear it and generally i was finding when i clear it because a lot of the paint brushes are set to over um i was finding that it made a lot of sense to set this clear here to 0 0.1 so that means it's not completely clearing it there are values uh, within the mask that give me more consistent behavior overall if I just set it to over here I'm going to change the resolution up to 1024 it's still a little low res and that is because I also need to go back into my composite settings and just make sure that these are the same resolution as whatever my initial volume is if I just turn off overrise size there, it seems to be picking it up from the SOP. Yeah, so that will get me a nice cleaner edge. Ah, so it seems to be the thumbnail generation that slows it down a little bit. And so if we hold G over the viewport, we can uh, access the various different type of paint tools. Uh, so we'll put it over to just maybe this one, Clouds. And you can see we start to get a significant amount of detail, really, for what is, um, when we look at the wireframe, uh, you know, a very low poly surface. Just clear that away, and we can try the third one as well. Just get a feel for that. Of course, you can take some time to adjust all of the brush settings. Uh, we also can use a stamp. So I'll just clear this. It sets the mandrel by default. Uh, so I can come in and you can see that, yeah, we're getting a, a fair amount of detail. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I think that it's uh, quite a fun little workflow to play around with. It does need uh, a little bit of polish in places in terms of the interactivity of the brushes and maybe the range of brushes. Um, hopefully side effects will develop more tools that are brush based over time. Other areas that could be further explored, I think, would be uh, adding more of the height field noises into this operation before we go over to COPS or manipulating the data over in COPS for example maybe blurring your brush strokes or uh, sharpening your brush strokes to get different kinds of mark making I think all of that could be experimented with I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one